How's it going? Today is Monday, September 30th, and we are in chapter 12, chapter 13, where we left off, second book of Chronicles. And after this Bible, I'm about to eat this pea soup. It's nice and delicious pea soup. Bless it, how we bless the food. Bless us, our Lord, with these thy gifts, which we're about to receive from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord, amen. We do a prayer like that for the food. And then we bless the Bible. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. God bless us with this wisdom, your wisdom, which is your wisdom, your truth, your way, your life, your ultimate happiness in life. With your Bible, please help us to gain wisdom while we read it and listen and learn and love it and hear it. Because when we hear the word of God, we hear you, God, our Father, who art in heaven. In your name we pray, amen. Chapter 12. There it is. Perfection. I don't just time it these perfectly, you guys, at the start of it. No, I let them go as they go. And it, it, they just, God just comes down at the right time, miraculously, through miracles, through blessings, through signs from God, signs of God. Chapter 12, that we're on the right track. Verse 1. And it came to pass when Rehoboam had established the kingdom and had strengthened himself. He forsook the law of the Lord and all Israel with him. And it came to pass that in the fifth year of a king Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem because they had transgressed against the Lord with 1,200 chariots and 60,000 horsemen. And the people were without number that came with him out of Egypt. The Lubims, the Sukkims, and the Ethiopians, and he took the fenced cities which pertained to Judah and came to Jerusalem. Then came Shemaiah, the prophet, to Rehoboam and to the princes of Judah that were gathered together at Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said unto them, Thus says the Lord, You have forsaken me, and therefore have I also left you in the hand of Shishak. Whereupon the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves, and they said, The Lord is righteous. And when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, saying, They have humbled themselves, therefore I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance, and my wrath shall be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of, Sh by the hand of Shishak. Nevertheless, they shall be his servants, that they may know my service and the service of the kingdoms of the countries. So Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took all, he carried away also the shields of gold which Solomon had made, instead of which King Rehoboam made shields of brass and committed them to the hands of the chief of the guard that kept the entrance of the king's house. And when the king entered into the house of the Lord, the guard came and fetched them and brought them again into the guard chamber. And when he humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him, that he would not destroy him. Altogether, and also in Judah, things went well. So King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and reigned. For Rehoboam was 41 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Nema, and Ammonites, Ammonites, Ammonites. And he did evil before the Lord, for he did not prepare the heart, for he did not prepare his heart to worship the Lord and to seek him with all his heart. Now these are the heart, now these are the acts of Rehoboam first and last, to do evil before the Lord God of Israel, and there were wars between Rehoboam the son of Solomon and Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, continuing. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, and Abijah his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 13. In the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Abijah, began to reign over the tribe of Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Mecha, the daughter of Uriel of Ramtha. And Abijah mobilized an army of valiant men of war, 400,000 young men who took upon themselves to go and fight against Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. And Jeroboam also had mobilized an army, and he came to fight against him with 800,000 young men, being mighty men of valor. 
and Abijah stood upon, up upon them. And Abijah stood up upon Mount Zemaraim, which is in the border of Mount Ephraim, and said, Hear me, O Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and all Israel. Perhaps you know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever, even to him and to his sons by a covenant pertaining to be king the kingship. Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon, the son of David, rose up and rebelled against his Lord. And he gathered to him certain wicked men and the children of iniquity, and he prevailed against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. When Rehoboam was young and was when Rehoboam was young and not advanced in years and did not know what to say and did not comfort the people concerning the heavy yoke which Solomon his father had laid upon them and even now what can you say you went away and renounced the kingdom of the house of David and went and served dead gods and I reigned over a single tribe but you are over many tribes and there are with you golden calves which Jeroboam the son of Nebat made for you and you have cast out the priests, the sons of Aaron, and the Levites, and have made priests for yourselves of the people of the land. And whoever and whosoever comes to offer an offering, you take from him a young bullock and seven rams, and he becomes a priest of them that are not gods. But for us, we have not forsaken the Lord our God. And the priests who minister to the Lord are the sons of Aaron. And the Levites serve as they should. They offer to the Lord every morning and every evening burnt offerings, uh, burnt offering and sweet incense, and set the showbread in order upon the pure table, and the candlestick of gold with its lamps, and a boy having charge of the lamps lights them every evening. Thus we have charge of the ordinances of the Lord our God. But you have forsaken him and have gone after dead gods, and you serve them and worship them, and have forsaken the Lord God of your hope the Lord God of your fathers, therefore you shall not prosper in the world. But Jeroboam caused an ambush to come about behind them. So they were before Judah, and the ambush was behind them. And when Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before the was before and behind. And they cried unto the Lord. And the priests sounded with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the men of the house of Judah shouted, The Lord defeated Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and all Israel before Judah and Abijah. And the children of Israel fled before Judah. And Abijah slew them with a great slaughter. So there fell slain of, of Israel 500,000 young men. Thus, the children of Israel were defeated at that time. And the children of Judah prevailed because they said, We rely upon the Lord God of our fathers. And Abijah pursued Jeroboam and took some great cities from him, from him Bethel with its pastures, Shil Shilah with its pastures and Ephron Ifr Ifr with its pastures. Neither did Jerob Jeroboam recover strength again in the days of Abijah. And the Lord struck Jeroboam and he died. But Abijah became strong and he married 14 wives. And there were born to him 22 sons and 16 daughters. And the rest of the acts of Abijah and his ways, behold, are written in the poems of the prophet Edu. Chapter 14 will begin tomorrow. Second book of Christ. Good King Asa, we read today about the Good King. With that, we'll close the prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. God, you are our ultimate Good King. Please make us your Good Kings in life. All of us. In your name we pray, Amen. Peace. See you guys tomorrow. God willing.